Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I, and the rest of the nerd herd, we're gonna go look at some junk. Maybe bring some home. Maybe eat that one? I don't know. We'll see what happens. I think this one's gonna go on the trailer. It's a uh, 62 C30. They call them C30s, the Apaches? I don't know. It's a factory poo cab conversion. Looks like they, um, I don't know. The, the Duramax conversion is what the Ford fanatic said. Must have needed the spindle or something. We don't really know. Ran out of oxygen midway. Good news is they're studded and split rims. Look at that sweet piano hinge on the door. You got the right one, baby! You got the right one, baby! 61, I think? Steering wheel? Car? It was a four-speed. I think it was a V8. Duff, check her out! See what you think. Do you love it? I think so. Miko, get it! Well, it's a good thing you brought the trailer for you two to run around on. It's got custom West River rocker panels. Galvanized upgrade. Oh yeah. Tool rack, pegboard, tail light, all kinds of barbed wire. That'll match Kool-Aid Man's tattoo. It almost goes the whole way around, but he started crying when it got to the flabby part inside his arm. Toe hitch. Oofta. She's a little she's a little chewy on this side. Whiskey dents. What did they patch those cab corners with? Is that concrete? Oh, it's real good. White wall. Oh yeah. You guys think Ray Charles welds bad. You should see what this guy can do. <laughs> Radio. That's pretty tough, but you don't see many. But it's a factory crew cab. If anybody knows what kind of conversion it is, comment down below. What's under there, Duff? Anything? I'm trying to get it steer on the trailer. That'll be fun. Puddin! We got a Chevy Love here for you too. It's rough. Oh, it's got chrome spokes though. 62 Impala, Iowa classic car. Ryan, check it out. 62 Bel Air. That thing isn't too bad. V8 car. Oh man, it's got a chrome reverse up front. Son of a biscuit. 14, probably. No motor tranny. Bel Air, two tail lights. Impala, We've got three. International travel all wouldn't be so bad, except for the kind of uh, wrapped around a highline pole. Pudding, you need a wood grain travel all. Green is good. Factory bucket seats. Mm-hmm. Before we get to it though, we gotta go pick something else up. A donor, because if you can't tell, this thing needs some love. Somebody cut the lower control arm, no radiator, motor, tranny, all that. So, we're gonna go pick up Square Body Suburban. Convert this thing to a half ton with disc brakes and independent suspension, five lug differentials. Maybe even power steering, power brakes, all that good stuff. So here we go. Let's go get her. We got her home. 
I gotta put some tires on it and get this thing hit inside because kind of like fat girls and mopeds, they're fun to ride. You just don't want your friends to see you doing it. So before we catch any trouble from the local authorities, we're gonna stick this thing inside, but we gotta make it roll first. Cause it's gonna be rolling when we're all done. So we might as well make it roll now. All right, let's get after it. In case you don't remember these bad boys, they're the original front wheels that were on Casper. Which, by the way, is working out excellently with the lowering kit, the alignment, and the 4.3, and all its OG Quadrajet V6 smog delete goodness. Duff. I thought flies stuck to poop. Nope, it's just ginormous arachnids. He's he's fine. Anywho, let's take a, a look at this thing. The chin was all excited for the tinted window. Zzz. Well, that one's there. Oh, it's got the stainless deflectors. Roof rack with the spoiler on the back. Back bumper, which I was hoping to adapt onto Casper. It's wasted. Tail lights that I needed for the K5. Yeah, that one might fill a hole. I think the windows are different between a Blazer and a Suburban. I don't know for sure what the difference is, but they're different. Oh, back glass is tinted too. Tailgate, rusty. Quarter panel, rusty. Running boards, smashed up. Tire, still leaking. That fender? Okay, nope, nope, little whiskey dented up. Hood doesn't match. I was hoping it would have a small block and an overdrive, but yeah, shoot, check it out. It's not good. But when I grabbed the shifter, it seemed a little floppy. So I asked the guy, does it have a transmission? He goes, I don't know. Cause I looked in here and it says overdrive. It is a tilt column with cruise, but when I was uh, swapping tires, I looked, no drive shaft, and I saw the transmission cooler lines laying under there. No 700R4, wah, wah, wah. Ooh, a lawn chair, some exhaust, power windows, and power locks. Oh, get right in there. No third seat. A typical square body headliner. It's there, just real droopy. Yeah, power locks and windows. Minty. AM FM cassette, hot dang. Must have had dual tanks and the rear, whatever, window electric thing. Dash pads wasted. So I mean, there's pieces, cluster, steering column. I'm not excited about the door panels or the power window stuff. Seat is no good. I don't know if Suburbans are different or not. Probably are, because they probably don't tip ahead. Do they, Duff? Do they? I don't know, I don't know. High fives, all the high fives. Also, if your square body doors don't shut, slide a chunk of PVC, half inch PVC right over that. Worked wonders on Casper. Thanks to uh, all you guys that suggested that. Chin already had this. Just get a chunk of that stuff, put it over the doors, works good. No mirror, got a 6.2 litre diesel ornament. Chin is all excited about that grill. It does have the bumperettes. Front bumper's wasted. It's either an 81 or a two. The way I can tell that is because they got the marker lights down there and then the 83 on up had it up here. And the earlier ones, I don't know, in the grill as well. What year is it, Duff? What year are you? What do you identify as? Did you find any Hoover Schneef in there? It's an 81 or two. 
think it's got a small block. It identifies as a diesel. Maybe it is a diesel. Oh, that's a small block. Quadrupuke is gone. AC, power steering, power brakes, cruise control. So it's got some good pieces. No radiator. But I think the cowl is the same, maybe. Oh, that'll tell us the year. And the engine size, 5.7 for what year? 82, 82 model. So I think the cowl radiator support would be the same as our 86 to go to the forehead light. Who dank, obviously I need to get a different grill, probably headlight surrounds. That size busted any who, maybe. But yeah, bumperettes, our chin can have the grill. We'll save the core support. That fender's rusty, banged up down there. So we're gonna take the front clip off. We're gonna save the front end to put under that C30. We'll save the engine for bits and pieces. Uh, we'll save the gas pedal, brake pedal, all that stuff to put in that C30. Rear end for the C30. Not really seeing much that we can save for the K5. And by the time this video is coming out, it's gonna be gone, guys. So if you want something, you can message me, but it's probably gonna be long gone because this thing's an eyesore. Yeah, I don't know what else. Oh, it had the big ugly mirrors. Had, keyword. So we're gonna start ripping on this thing. It's about seven o'clock. My feet are wet from walking on the wet grass. So I'm gonna go get some dry socks so I don't get the trench foot. And then Duff and I are gonna rip into this thing. Who knows, maybe we'll get a special visitor. Like I said, it's 10 to seven. So hoping the time we shut her down for tonight, we can kick this thing out of here so that there's no critters that are in this thing moved into the shop. Oh, and we got some rallies. I think they're eights. Yeah, yeah, those must be eights. They were all not gonna hold air. Our Harbor Freight Pittsburgh Jack decided to puke all over the trailer. That thing's not even a year old. So I guess we'll be on the market for a larger one. I don't know, the first one I bought of those things lasted like 10 years. And this is the second one that I've had that didn't even make it a full year. Freaking, always something. Oh, hey, a bobber. Keep your eyes on your own bobber. Watch me get a hook in my finger. Should we take up fishing? Nope. All right. Got some uh, fresh socks. Let's crack a sandwich. What are we going with? Bush, Coors. Keith Stone back in here. Let's get stoned tonight. Here we go. Oh, see, we do have some sandwiches left. You gotta get the blue ones, special light. These are ham and cheeses. Those are the heavies. Put hair on your chest, like Grandpa says. And they just, they don't sit well with me. So, if you think you got hams at your store, you do. It's, you got ham and cheeses. You don't have sandwiches, special light. Nah. All right. We got some police, every breath you take, cranking on the Pandora. Uh, you're probably not gonna hear much from me. Well, you know, I talk a lot. We're just gonna kick her and fast forward and crank stuff out, because this thing ain't sleeping inside and there ain't room to get the skid steer in. Here we go. What are you just hanging out in there watching me work? You laying claim to this thing? You can have it. That went pretty well. The power steering hose were unhooked. AC was pretty much unhooked. I grabbed the master cylinder and the brake lines because we might use that. Unhook the steering down at the coupler going into the steering sector. I did forget to unhook the throttle cable. 
I think I could salvageable, but if not, they're pretty reasonable. The engine mount bolts were in there, but the nuts were off. So I think somebody was trying to get this thing out and gave up. And also they didn't know what they were doing because they had taken two of these engine mount bolts out. This one was just about out, finger tight. And then they gave up. So I don't think they know what they're doing. But that's a good sign. That makes me think that this 350 might have been good before they, you know, they were gonna use it. What's the dipstick say, Jimmy? It says empty. Does it budge when we try to turn it over? I don't know. Let's find out. Not good. Oh, but it's got a good starter though. I'm sure it doesn't have anything to do with the mouse nest inside of the intake. Oh, and I snapped off one of the 5 16th bolts when I was starting in the intake. Because I'm an idiot. What do you do? Really, I bought this thing for the front and rear end. The drivetrain would have been a huge bonus. I gave scrap price for this thing, so like 300 bucks. Plus we got like $100 worth of rally wheels. We're doing okay. But it would have been sweet if there would have been an overdrive that was good and or a small block that was good. But we still got brackets on here, AC brackets. We got a HEI. Is that the good one with the uh, just the one wire that we need? Yeah. Four pin module instead of the five pin. We got exhaust manifolds, power steering, brackets, starter, fuel pump. Nope. They're like 20 bucks. We don't mess with those. Alternator brackets. Pulleys. There's a lot of good pieces there. Let's uh, get to ripping this front end out. Get those bumperettes off too before I mess them up any more than they already are. So these front ends, you gotta take these bolts out. Well, those four bolts holding the engine mounts in. And then there's a couple bolts coming in through the sides. And then a few coming in from the bottom. And then you gotta unhook your steering linkage, uh, your brake lines, and the sway bar. Really not much to it. I think that's about it. Oh, shocks. Gotta unhook the shocks as well. So I will get after that. Kick that thing outside. I just wanted to show you guys that somebody was already doing something on this. Oh, we got tranny cooler lines. I like saving those because they're handy. Throw those in the save pile over here with the master cylinder and the radiator hoses. Because they weren't flex hoses. Brilliant! Brilliant! Also, it only took one stone to get that engine out. Probably because somebody else did most of the work for us. Just had another uh, a Tiffany. She's a nice gal. She said, just lob the frame off right behind those shock bolts. And then pretty much the only thing we should have to cut is the fuel hoses coming from the back. They shouldn't have any fuel in them because it's been off the road for 23 years. And the brake hose, brake line, fuel line, brake line, going to the back. And then we gotta take a couple of bolts out up here for the core support, and then we can just wheel this whole thing out. That way we can get at the back of these easy. We don't have to climb in and out, lay underneath it, because we can just tip it upside down. And we got the manpower to do it. Plus I like running the torch. Good call, Keith Stone and a Tiffany. My name? Yeah. It's Keith Stone. Keith Stone? You're so smooth. Always. Oh, and we got, we'll have to just slide that off the rest of the way. Way better than climbing in and out of there a gazillion times and laying on her back, up and down. Still got air in that tire, even. We're killing it! It's one of these creepy Ford guys. Duff, who's here? Get him! Get him! Sick the creepy Ford man! Wait, you're the Mopar man. What are you doing driving a Ferd? Found it on the road, Dad. Fixed it and repaired it daily. Yep. Oh, now things are really gonna happen. That's what we do around here. He's even got his Twisted X hat on. He's, Again? Cause he's a real cowboy. Yep. We're gonna have to get you a Mortsky sweatshirt. You like them hood sweatshirts, don't you? Wear them all the time. Oh, you even got your working jeans on. Yep. Let's do this.
Chase doing it look itself. If only we had a jack. It's a really expensive tripod. Camera wasn't on. Really? Just kidding. So much room for activities. Should have been Look at all this all floor space. Up. So much Your aerobics in here. So many activities. Do step class. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. Break time. Oh, done perfectly. Dang. Dang. That's the best $4 pizza I made all day. Rhombus, guys. We need more pizza. What's he doing? I'm leaving. Freaking beer. I'm not your mother. So I got the shocks off, park brake cables. We cut those because that's what we do. Like a hot knife to butter. Brake line is. I didn't cut. I cut the line, took the clip off, so the hose is still there. Shocks are off. We're gonna pull the wheels off. Mopar, Ma Mopar Madman was supposed to have that done already, oh. but, but he doesn't. I didn't know it was my job. And then we're gonna heat up the U bolts and get those one of them off, and then the other one almost off. And then we're gonna wheel it outside so that we can get it out of here because it's got a halfway roll. I don't know that that thing will pick it up all the way. Everything's smoked out of here. We got the column out, booster, all the cruise control stuff. We got the AM FM cassette out. We got the factory clock dash. We get any other goodness? Oh, we got the brake pedal, accelerator pedal. Oh, and we got a, we got the mirror because it's way better than the one in the '86 that's laying on the floor and not hooked up. Oh, speedometer cables, bezel, diff is all that's left. And then this thing can go back with you. No. no. You, you can keep two thirds of it. Score. Let's throw it in. All right. Here we go. What'd you do? Really cranking it out now. Yeah. All of the help. And you guys match wearing the oh never mind. You don't have the pink crocs on. So we're gonna whammy this front end out. We there's the uh, torsion bars gotta go. And then these three bolts over here and those bolts horizontally. And then I think we gotta take the steering arm off. We're probably gonna use this stock steering. These guys know what it's all about. Yes, we do. We just helped you bring this pile of crap in here. We're getting educated. This wheel doesn't even look that bad now. <laughs> <laughs> the handling's 
It's real good. Duff, have you checked this thing out yet? He's like, I don't even... Oh, I'll check it out, he says. That seat isn't that bad. Came with... 30 cents worth of pegboard. It's not an aluminum bell housing. It's cast. Oh, those are big poops. That's why Duff wanted to go in there. Let's... Come on, let's get out of there. Hey. Please? Come on. Thank you. No. Come on. Get out of there. Gross. All right, front end removal, engage. High five, Duff! Okay, you just get a pat on the head. Well, Duff, we got our diff out. Nobody died, didn't break nothing. Good to go. Are you sad to see the Suburban go, Duff? It'll be okay. It'll live on as a Hyundai or something. Thanks for donating everything, Blue Bourbon. All right, back to the fun stuff inside. We cleaned up last night. Picked up all my tools. Frame's all cleaned up. Well, not cleaned up. Everything's off of it. Now we just gotta strip this all down. Shocks, bolt through the side and the bottom, clamshells. Brake lines, bumperettes. We gotta take the mounts off for the uh, idler over here, and then we have to re drill those holes on that frame for the idler. And have to split the pitman arm. Yeah. And if we were pudding, we'd pressure wash it. But... Oh, yeah. We probably won't, because we're not pudding. When he would paint the frame, too. Definitely not doing that.
there it is folks about 30 minutes according to the time on the camera here there's four bolts on each side coming in horizontally three that come in vertically on each side so six and eight you get two bolts for your bitman arm no bitman arms over here four bolts holding the steering box two hard lines for the brakes and then uh, I did save the proportioning valve and all that good stuff, didn't I, Duff? Idler arm. Two bolts in the idler arm. Uh, what, like eight bolts to get the whole sway bar off? Sway bar brackets are wasted, but we'll save them. Just maybe use as templates if we need to. I might half-heartedly scrape this thing off. What do you think, Duff? Because it is kind of grimy. I ain't going to pressure wash it. You know, if you were doing a Barrett Jackson or SEMA build, like we're never going to do, you would probably sandblast it and paint it. But only bushings, tie rod ends, springs, shocks, rotors, calipers, pads, all that good stuff. But we're not gonna, because this thing's a beater. So we're just gonna fuck it back together. I can't remember which holes. I think it's these four on the side. I think they all line up already with those four right there. And then those vertical ones. It seems like we had to drill something. I don't remember what it was. And then the idler arms you have to just line that up and drill that don't look duff so i'll spend a little time cleaning that up uh, maybe clean the scale off that frame just a hair and then we'll get her set in place maybe take some measurements just to see which holes we got to drill the nice part about the vertical holes is there's these plates right here so if you line those up with the two holes on the bottom provided they exist in that frame, which this is the wrong side, but it'll work for demonstration purposes. Yep, they're a different bolt pattern. So we shall see. Looks like those three are there in the bottom. Let's let's check it out. Let me shimmy under here. Whoop! You can see back there, the torsion bar mount. It's just those two bolts back there. I just smoked those bolts. And then we had to cut the torsion bars the sneak that bracket out of there but she's pretty well cleaned up and once this cross member is in place you could probably cut this one out because this is where your bell housing bolts would go in if you use the old style engine mounts but we got the new style ones so we we'll probably don't need this it does add a little rigidity right now because there's no front cross member in these like there is in that 73 to 87 see how two of them line up and then that one needs to be reamed out Yeah, and then it looks like we got to drill all of the ones in the side. So that should be fun. I wonder if we can just center mark that, drill it all with a really tiny bit, and then ring it out. Or we just take the torch, don't tell anybody. Racks. Okay, let's uh, do it to it. Just double check the bolt pattern is the same on this side. Sure enough, front two, and the back one doesn't line up. Guess we're gonna have to drill all the side ones. So we got her stabbed in there. It's not as easy as I remember. Uh, I got her pretty close, and then I used the old come along and cheated her into place. And then use the bar to walk the holes to where they need to be. That rear hole is the only one that lines up. I was thinking there was more than that. So we need to drill those two vertical holes on each side. And well, we got it here. We're going to mark these two top holes. Then we'll have to make a template for the bottom holes. And then we'll use that plate that I showed you a little bit ago, that angle iron, to figure out where the holes got to be in the uh, horizontal plate in the vertical direction. But yeah, the wheel sits centered, so that should be good. I remember the steering lined up on the other one. 
I'm sure it'll be just fine on this thing. So you gotta drop this in and out a few times unless you've done it a bunch or you made really, really good templates, which I made no templates whatsoever. We still got the chunk of frame rail out there for reference. So I'm gonna drop this thing out of here after I mark some holes. Maybe I'll even drill these horizontal holes first and then we'll have to make a template for those other two horizontal holes and then we'll use that angle iron for the vertical holes. So a bunch of drilling, not really any fun. So we're just gonna crank her through that because drilling holes is worse than pressure washing. Nobody wants to do that. Clune Duff just hanging all over there in the shade, waiting for us to go for a ride in the pickup. But he's gonna wanna go for a ride in this thing. Someday, we'll get there. Let's take it all back apart again. Lazy dog, what are you doing? So we got all of our holes drilled. You can see the new ones are pretty close to the old ones. That's kind of unfortunate that GM didn't just keep them the same. So all I did to get that figured out was I just took this angle iron plate, lined it up with our back one, got it pretty straight with the other holes. Used a uh, center punch kit from Arbor Freight. And then drilled a small hole with our Norseman drill bits. These things are freaking good. Make sure you get the uh, three-sided ones. That way they don't spin in your drill. And then I got some Norseman reamers. Not a paid promotion, but these things are freaking awesome. Round holes, they don't bite, mows right through them. And then I did the same thing up top here. Set that in place. I'll show you on this side. Use my bolts to line it up and then uh, mark the outside, drilled it. Pretty easy. About uh, 15 minutes of messing around, and maybe a little bit longer, 20 minutes, half hour. But yeah, we should be ready to lift this thing up, and then we just gotta drill holes for our brake lines, and for our idler arm. This guy, that one. So to get that figured out, we'll just put our Pittman arm into this drag link, and then kind of measure how far away from the cross member that is, right Duff? Yep. And then just make sure that bar's parallel with the world and then clamp that in place, mark it, drill them. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then it's just the shock mounts that are left. These shock mounts are at a different angle. I'll show you once we get everything bolted up, but they gotta be either moved or something else made. Since we're under here, this pickup was originally green. I think what they did was bought a green long box or no box, one ton and then they modified it from there. I'll show you the rest. You gonna give him the nickel tour underneath of it, Duff? Yeah? He's got it all scoped out. I haven't really checked out how they did the door jams, but I'm guessing they just left the front jam in place and cut it off behind it and then put this ugly piano hinge. And then they just riveted this panel on here for the new rocker panel. Cut the old one off about here, and then grafted it on, left it with the back of the cab right about there. And then you see they did that with the floors. They just cut them off, this support right here. And then it's just flat metal that they bent up. And then they didn't do any inner rockers. You can see all the cab supports are shot. Some big holes in the floor for something. But it doesn't look like the frame was ever stretched. So I'm guessing it's just a long wheelbase one ton. If they did stretch it, I think that's just rust running down there. They did a really good job of hiding it. I don't think the frame was ever stretched. Then you can see they made their own like splices in the center here and these cross members. And this is where the floor ended. And this is, you know, the factory floor where they cut the back of the cab off. And then, oh yeah, you can see it's just angle iron that they made for the back of the cab mounts. And this cab mount looks factory. Original. They never put any bolts in it or anything. But yeah, pretty crude. I mean, a guy could make one if he really wanted to. Of course, the bottom side didn't really matter because it was all hidden. And then I think they just used a regular box and fender, and then they don't have the step in here. They have the box or the fenders. Cheat your head on the box. Pretty crude. But yeah, a guy could definitely make those rockers at home and the floors and do a lot better job. Oh, those door hinges are hideous. Right, Duff? All right, back to swapping the front end.
Show what we did. Get the holes drilled for our idler arm. Over here, pretty much all that's left is to do the brake hoses. But I think I can fish them through those existing holes. The original one had like a hex that it slid through so that it would stay in position, but I think it'll be just fine. For the round hole, my last one was. Yeah, you tell him. And then you can see how the shock kind of sits like this, and then the top is here off to the side. That shock might actually, it might not bind going up and down, but I don't have new shocks for the front of one of these. And being like we are, we will probably lower it, so we'll need a shorter shock anyway. So we're not gonna mess with the shocks. We're not gonna mess with brakes until we get to that point. We gotta do master cylinder and all that stuff. But look at this. Wheels are turned left. Turn our nice 61 Impala steering wheel to the right. Ooh, lube up them hinges. Now they sit straight. The steering's hooked up. So I think we're pretty much wrapped up here in the front. Oh yeah, we got the sway bar yet to do, but my sway bar brackets are bent to crap. So we're not even gonna worry about that. Again, it might change once it gets lowered as things get moved up. We might have to have shorter brackets or something like that. So the front end, done. Like I said, you just uh, line up that back hole of those three holes and then use that template angle iron to drill your other four holes. And then when you get it in place, you can drill these top two, mark and drill those top two, pretty easy. And then you got your idle arm holes to drill. And boom, all of a sudden now you got five lug, you got disc brakes, you got super cheap tie rod ends, ball joints, all that good stuff that you get with a 73 to 87. And you get a plethora of drop spindles, tubular control arms, big brakes. You get a lot better wheel selection. Possibilities are limitless. And then with an adapter, you can go to power steering. I think we'll probably get one from like CPP or I think there's, what is it, Res? They got one as well. And then you got a sweet donor for the rear end and for power brakes, if you wanted to use the columns, seats, power windows, possibilities are pretty much limitless. So let's go to the back end, because you can't have five lug and eight lug. It's just silly, you gotta have a match. And plus, with that five lug, there again, you get cheap brakes, better wheel selection, probably a much better gear ratio. This thing's probably got like 410s or 456s in it. And then you get rid of these silly split rims. So let's do that. Before we do that, we should put some rallies back on this thing. Not these ugly steel wheels. What do you say, Duff? See if we can find some rallies. Okay. Duff, you're a lot of help. We got rallies back on with tires that hold air. I ran out of tubes, so I had to manually seat that one, and let's hope it holds air. It's got a bunch of slime on there, a new valve stem, whatever. It did have 
a van rally cap on it, which I think are hideous, how they're smooth, instead of having notches right there for the lug nuts. They also bolt on from the backside. I never knew the bolt on from the backside part, but you still need beauty rings and lug nuts and all that, but they're on there. Doesn't it look way more gooder? I'm gonna do the rear. That should be straightforward. It won't be though. Well, the other thing I forgot with this swap is you get what I call late model engine mounts, you know, the clamshell as opposed to, you know, whatever these things had six cylinder mounts or whatever. The thing is, you know, use the two existing holes down here in the cross member, which I already tightened up. And then the top, you gotta drill these two holes and then you need a spacer. I'll have to measure that, but it's like three quarter or seven eighths of an inch, I think. So you just gotta clamp those down. Or if you really wanted to get crazy, you could cut these down, take out three quarters of an inch, splice it back together. But for all the intense camping and purposes, we're gonna just, uh, slide a bushing in there and a longer bolt and it'll be just fine you know if you really want to do it upright you'd probably replace these with some new rubber mounts as well but we're on a budget so let's get to the back look at how ugly those wheels are compared to these so much gooder especially if you put a beauty ring on it and some new bolts holding the club cap on shiny new lug nuts all right Unless you happen. Back to work. So Shrek, the rear differential here, came out without too much of an issue. Just heated up the U-bolts so that we can hopefully salvage them. There's no shock mounts. I cut the brake hose because we're going to use that again anyway. Looks like they're kind of on the same similar side. This is off a little bit set further than that one's kind of right about in here. I measured the spring width and it's about two and a half, two and a quarter inches wider on that than it is on this one. So we'll have to cut those spring pads off and put new ones on there there's no shocks on this thing so we'll have to figure out some type of shock mounts if you're doing this on an earlier one or a half ton or a three quarter ton it's probably gonna have coil springs in the back so you have to get some brackets to weld to your differential so that it mounts on those truck arm suspension also if you didn't know who invented the truck arm suspension go check it out Hot Carl Racing Chassis. Is, he's got some pretty good videos out there. Yeah. Check out how he invented the uh, B Mod chassis or something. I'm not a circle jerker, so I don't know how that stuff works, but his videos are pretty funny. What is this thing puking its guts out now? Son of a biscuit. All right, I'm going to rob the uh, U bolts off that for a rainy day project. And then we're going to throw this in the scrap pile. We're going to torch the brackets off of that one. I did grab this bracket. And uh, these are the same size diameter tubes, so that's awesome. All we should have to do is smoke those off, grab some new leaf spring mounts, differential mounts, saddles, whatever you want to call them. Throw those on there, set her in place. I'm not going to tack them on because we got to set her pinion and all that. And the other thing is, since this is a one ton, this thing has just not the biggest stack of leaves I've ever seen, but a pretty good stack. So we're just going to put it under there for now. But if I were going to keep going with this thing, I would get an engine in it and get the front ride height set to where I wanted it to be. You know, whether it be drop spindles, control arms, cut coils, whatever. And then I'd pull leaves out in the back until I got it to where I wanted it to be. And also removing leaves is going to get you a lot better ride because this thing is going to ride like an ox cart, like a brick S house. You know what I mean? Like a tank, like a girl named Wendy that you used to date in high school, whatever. She's going to be rougher than a cob. So we're just going to leave it for now, though. It's going to sit pretty high in the back, but 
there's no point in taking a bunch of leaves out now. I mean, it'll look cool sitting there, but you're gonna have to adjust it again later anyway. So let's not do anything three times. Let's just do it twice. All right, less yapping, more torching, back at it. So you got those cut off, got the housing cleaned up a little bit. I didn't get too crazy. If somebody wants to see they can polish it a little bit more. Ready to slide this thing under there. And second thought, I think I'm just gonna use those saddles again just to get it in place and rolling. And uh, when we get to the hardcore build part, we'll put some new ones on there. Cause like I said, you're gonna have to pull it apart and uh, pull some leaf springs, get that ride height set anyway. So this is just, Permanently temporary. Let's slide this thing in place now. Look at that, we got a five lug diff under this thing. Didn't go too bad. Uh, I failed to acknowledge that by moving the leaf springs in, that that would get into the shock mount. So I had to torch those off. What do you do? Obviously we need to figure out something for shocks on the back because there's no mounts on the frame. So we're gonna address that all at the same time. But it's centered under there, it's clamped in place. Obviously, you know, if, since we're gonna lower it, I didn't mess around with pinion angle. Where that needs to be. So, it is what it is. But, we're gonna stick some wheels on it. I'm sick of playing with the tire machine, and without any tubes and as rusty as these rims are, I feel like we're uh, just gonna be chasing our tail by putting any tires on those without tubes, or without blasting them and grinding them and whatever, so. We're going back to the old steel wheels. Good enough for who it's for. And then this thing's pretty much a roller. Um, I guess I could still, so I gotta drill these mounts for the engine mount. I might pull that master cylinder off and see what we can do to adapt the dual reservoir master cylinder. Another thing that's way better than that single reservoir fruit jar, Get the dual reservoir. And then maybe I'll see if I can round up a tranny here. Maybe we'll play around with that engine a little bit and see if we can get that thing to run. First things first, we need to pick up this rear end. It's just water that's draining out. Don't worry, Greta. How dare you! Get that out of here. Oh, look, Ray Charles welded our hood latch. This whole core support, header panel, grill, is all just 
wasted. I think they tied a chain around it, tried to move it at one time. Pretty ugly, but let's get some wheels stabbed on this thing and take a look at it. And then figure out what we're gonna do next. Wish I had some more tubes so I could put some rallies on it because those black steelies just ain't cutting it for me. But it sits okay. I mean, it should be about a foot lower, but it sits better than it did with those big tall tires on it. Right? Duff says it's bedtime, so we're punching out. See you guys tomorrow. Well, Duff kind of half heartedly cleaned out the inside of this thing, so. Let's take a look. You can see that floor pan. Is it better now? Has been replaced. And uh, half-heartedly will be a stretch. And they replaced it all along the rocker. I think they used, well, two door cowl latches supports. What are we calling that? Striker areas? Like they cut the cab off right here and then got another cab from here forward. Because both doors use that same striker area. That's that same green. And then here is where things get interesting. I'm not sure of the conversion. There's a Facebook page, 60 to 66 Chevy Crew Cabs. Nobody's identified it on there either. But uh, yeah, they took the stock door, lobbed it off right in front of the window crank. Like... They barely got enough room for that. And uh, cap that off, and then just put this piano hinge on here. Bolted and riveted. So it swings all the way ahead. And then you can tell this is all fabricated on the back side. What's that? Oh, that's where the door stopped. Should have been hooked. And then probably to there too, but. The seat also looks Strikingly close to the original, but it's narrower and then these are fabricated mounts Does it flip ahead? Oh. If that door was open. It might do better That's cardboard that looks like it's add-on And yeah, you can see where they cut it cab right there And the front of the cab right there and this was clearly added in, and that's where I suppose they had some covering. She's a little crude. Uh, floor looks like, again, it's been patched back here as well. There's some carpet-ish stuff going on back there. I think that was added in. Well, man, that tin cannot be factory, but who knows? So, yeah, two door jams. And then two sets of doors. I suppose they had to buy a whole other cab to get another set of doors, so that would make sense. They just threw away the front half of one cab and the back half of another cab used both sets of doors, both strikers. Since they didn't have armrests, use that for a door pull, which I broke. But yeah, the piano hinge is pretty ugly, pretty crude. But I guess it works. Well, I'm half tempted we should just tear into that uh, 350, see what we got over there. You guys like looking inside of stuff, so do I. And that way I'll know if I just need to rob some parts off it and uh, throw it in the iron pile or put it on the marketplace, see if somebody needs to own it, or if it's worth finding a tranny and stabbing in here. I think we gotta cut that cross member out too. I really wanna do that because I like torching things out so oh, we still need to drill them holes too that can be done later wheel that engine in Haas you know he's taking a break on the job blackbirds are really at it today get out of here birds
in case you guys didn't see, I probably got five quarts of fluid out of there. And I would say 4.75 of it were water. Not good. So it could have came in through that valve cover or it could have went through that intake past the pistons in the oil pan. I doubt it came up through the exhaust. Highly unlikely. Or it could have came through there or there. So that's not good. But only the number eight. Well, only a couple of the pistons. Look like they had water in them, according to the spark plugs. So we stuck the schlong in there. And sure enough, those two are the only ones that look rusty in there. And it doesn't really look that bad. I think this thing would run. I just don't know how much effort is worth sticking into this thing. Let me clean off the pad up here and go on a uh, nasty Z28.com. Oh, and they freaking twisted off the fuel line. God, I hate when people do that. Use two wrenches, kids. Oh, that makes me want to... Two wrenches on the fuel lines, kids and adults. Let's clean that off, see if it's the factory engine. So here's our debacle. We got a stamping number up here that comes out V0710YW. V means flint, where the good water is. One guy will comment down below, oh, we fixed that water, that was several years ago. Seven means July, seventh month. 10 means the 10th day. And YW should be the suffix. There should be like three digits, but I only got YW. And I cannot find YW on NashDG28.com. Back here I got 391-4678, which comes up as a 68-327. Or it could be a 68-350. I'm not really sure. According to uh, the Google box, 391-4678 is either a 327 or 350 casting that was used from 1968 through 1978. In cars and trucks. It's also used for the 302. I'm not sure. You know it's a 68 block. And then you go to Nasty Z28 and it says we know it's a 68 block because the 391 4678 casting was a one year block casting. So let me do some digging on this. You know, this, this is why you want to look at this stuff. You know, if it was a 710 block, 39710, it just is a standard 350. It, it could be a 302. Highly unlikely. I can't figure out what this YW is. There should be another digit on there, and I can't find anything on the computer in my quick search, so we'll do a little digging. It's probably just a replacement block, no big deal. I'm most likely a 350, but somebody could have swapped a 327 larger journal in this thing. I wish probably pull a valve cover just to make sure it doesn't have some smog heads. Always do your research. You never know what you're gonna get. I mean, this thing was about, it's close to going on Facebook Marketplace for 50 or 100 bucks as a two bolt main because I did pull the oil pan and snake the schlong up there. It is a two bolt, so it is that. But every time I list an engine for 20 bucks on Facebook Marketplace, guys want to know if it's a four bolt or a two bolt. And even if you tell them it's four bolt, they never show up anyway. So what does it even matter, guys? Thanks for wasting everybody's time. Speaking of wasting time, I'm gonna go do some more research, try to figure out what the French we got going on here. Duff, you don't have any interest? Yeah, figured. Well, the saga continues. YW seems like it's a light duty truck engine, either 66, 67, or 68. And according to that one website, this casting is only using 68. So we're gonna dig into it some more, like, and see just what we got here. I'm guessing this thing's been gone through one other time. So we're gonna pull the valve covers off and see what numbers are on the heads. Either way, it's seeming like this thing is a 327, so definitely worth saving. And a later 327 bat, so large screw. All right, let's take it outside and blow some of this crap off of it, just so we don't get that inside, because there's already enough stuff inside. Well, the excitement has finally slowed down. So these are a 462624 head, which I think is 76 through 86, something like that. 
Smog heads. Not good. With a build date, L79, so that's a 12 month, seventh day of uh, the ninth year. So it's uh, December 7th of 79, I believe. So heads are really no good, but still the bottom end should be a 327, which somebody could have rebuilt this at one time because the only difference between a 327 and a 350 is the stroke. So somebody could have slid a 350 crank in it. So take it or leave it if you were doing a numbers match and build for a 68 ish 327 large journal this would be the engine that that guy needs we're working on a 62 that's right ugly headlights forgot i think i think it's worth pulling the heads off oh i'd grab the engine stand but there's still a cataract sitting on it sweet do you want to go ahead and take that off there looks the other way but uh, not a lot of crap got in here, some mouse poops, so that looks good. So if we could get this thing loose, it would probably run. Maybe we'll pull the other valve cover off, see just how bad it looks over there. And to do that, probably gonna have to pull the AC compressor, but we're probably gonna have to pull a bunch of brackets around it. I ended up pulling the AC stuff off because we're not gonna need AC in that thing anyway. And the head on this is dated H14 of nine. So August 18th of 79. So they're a couple of months off, but the same heads. So since those don't match, I'm guessing this thing's been opened up and it was probably rebuilt by some type of shop at some time. It's probably got a 350 crank in it, but either way, it looks pretty good under here it's not all sludgy or anything so we're not really out anything to pull the heads off other than i gotta take it off the stand to do that so i think we'll rip into it and see what we got there's really not a ton left to take off anyway i was gonna save a bunch of this bracketry and stuff off the front and the hei distributor and throttle brackets and all that anyway so let's just go ahead and dig her into her some more because that's what we're good at taking stuff apart They use silicone on the china walls. It's a freaking shame they left the carburetor off this thing because it was probably a good engine. Right, Duff? The disappointment is thick in this one. Ugh. I guess we keep delving into it. We found out where all the uh, carpet went. Oh, that's a lot of poops. How about that? That head looks pretty good. This head uh, pretty good other than that cylinder. Those ain't stuck. So we don't have to worry about snapping those off, do we, Dufsky? This side of the engine, there's a little bit of crap in there, but she don't look too bad. I mean, it don't look too good either. This side, on the other hand, a little bit of shrapnel there. And that's a whole lot of crap. I think that's uh, it's gonna do it for tonight. We're gonna have a sandwich and think about our decisions, what we're gonna do with this thing. We could uh, clean up those cylinder walls, but then how good is it gonna be? And not worth our time, really, to 
go through all that and then have an engine that just going to smoke a bunch anyway. Or worst case, or even worse, you get a bunch of uh, mouse poops in the oil galleys and starve it and wipe out a cam or a crank or a rod bearing or what have you. And then you just did all that for nothing. So I think that's probably just a better core. I do like a challenge. I mean, I would love to hear that thing run, but I don't think it's worth putting the effort into and then putting it in this pickup to see it drive. And we still got to find a transmission. We got to find a carburetor. Uh, the plug wires, half of them were missing, so on and so forth. But there's a lot of good pieces there. I mean, engine mounts, brackets, pulleys, HEI, flex plate, a lot of good stuff there. But I'm going to sleep on it. Don't, don't worry. We might come back to it. I think I think this one's just gonna get sold as a core. Get her out of here. We got enough engines sitting around. Well, sad day for the 1968 engine block. See that uh, Krakarooski there? Yeah, that's not good. Also, it's been bored 40 over. You can tell that by the 40 on top of the pistons. So, I think that pretty much wraps it here for us on the old 327 or 350, whatever you want to call it. The Suburban engine is new bueno. I'll uh, list it if somebody wants it for a couple bucks. Take a picture of that. I don't know if you can sleeve that or what. Nothing we're going to do because we don't have a rebuilt engine our entire fleet, so we're not going to start now. All right, I guess we're uh, scrapping that idea onto the next engine. Or no engine for this thing, I guess, is what we're saying. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to add. Neither Duff nor I are absolutely in love with this thing, so there's a price down below and availability. This thing could be yours because it's super rare and you need it. And we need another rig around here, like we need another hole in our head, right Duff? It's dark, you can't hardly see them all. All right, let's bolt the 327 back together so we can send that to a new owner. Or somebody with a boat that needs an anchor. Well, as I was pulling that engine mount off, uh, we had a, another a Tiffany. Yeah, the oil pan is vented as well. It's funny how that coincides with that particular cylinder. So maybe they were pulling this engine out to swap in a different engine, but that basically seals the fate of this thing. So I'm guessing it's gonna need a crank and rods. And there's maybe some good smog heads here. That's about it. So there you have it. We took a 1962 Chevy C30 crew cab conversion that had been sitting in a pasture for 40 some years. We got a half ton suspension underneath it. We need all kinds of other good stuff. Uh, stripped out an 82 Suburban donor, tore apart the engine, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, we got this thing this much closer to being on the road. It now steers, it rolls, it's got decent wheels and tires on it. Not decent tires, but yeah. So, appreciate it. Thanks very much for watching. If you don't have any Mortski swag, click the link down below, check it out. I prefer the next level t-shirts. Heather gray, not this light gray. Makes me look like I sweat profusely. Also, we got the memberships going on down below, the Duff approved, a few bucks a month. You get a couple of perks down there, check it out. Check out the other videos as well. And uh, remember, it doesn't matter how you get done, as long as you're having fun. Is there any more rabbits out there? That is a big bus, and it is scraping going up that hill. Ooh, she bottomed out hard over there, didn't it, Duff? Over at, oh, it's a motor Mahome.